Today in this video we're going to show you the cold start of the 1937 Terraplane as well as a modification we made because of being in Arizona and an explanation of what went on in the 1930s with gasoline and carburation that would cause us to have done that modification. So stay tuned for that information. We're going to show you the carburetor here sitting directly on top of course the intake manifold but you notice that there is if you were to look down here there is just this minor gasket there's nothing trying to separate heat wise from the intake manifold which is directly below the exhaust manifold. All of this area gets fairly hot. Now it's true underneath this cover Hudson has what they call an anti-percolation valve, which is supposed to aid with the idea that it's not supposed to boil the gasoline and send it down into the intake. And true, there is a little bit of a drain on the intake that they put in to try and drain out excess fuel. But the reality is, is in a hot climate like Arizona, this all heats up, it boils the gas, puts it in the intake manifold, causes it to be hard to start like we were telling you and why we're using a 612 system in order to make it easier to start when it's a hot temperature outside. Again, it'll start on six volts. It's just harder to do it when it's hot outside. Now, why they did this in the 1930s, not only did I say it's sort of lack of testing, you're not caring about you know who your customers are in Arizona, largely because there just aren't enough of them, but the real other thing that most people do not realize is gasoline in the 1930s was not good like we get today. And they would have something they called heavy ends or parts of the gasoline that would not vaporize easily. So they were actually heating the gas up more in order to cause it to vaporize. So this construction of sitting on top of this intake manifold so close to that exhaust manifold and everything being hot is actually more a function of the fact that the gasoline in the 1930s wasn't as good as it is today. Right here in the beginning of the process of starting the 1937 Terraplane, we have a vacuum electric clutch switch at this point. This switch can be pulled out, that would be off, pressed in is on, we leave it on for the actual start. So this is pushed in on for the start on this vehicle. Now when we move over right here, we have our little fan. We've added that because again Arizona is hot. We can turn this on if we open it up the valve and this is vacuum powered and this little fan provides cooling is for me it's the driver but we want to have that turned off so we turn that all the way in so we don't have a vacuum leak here next thing we've got is our electric hand system which is this assembly here we have this in the on position in the vehicle because we do drive it that way it could be off either way will work for a start but we leave it in the on position so those are those controls coming over now let's look at the instrument cluster area. Right here is our choke. Now in the winter we might give it a full choke, in the summer we might give it a partial choke. It'll be totally dependent on the temperature and that's one of the things you learn about antique automobiles is you're having to do the things that are now done by a computer in your modern vehicle and it sets everything up properly in the modern vehicle. Well you're doing all that by hand so you kind of have to have an idea and you notice I'm using up to about this point on my finger here to set the choke. So that should be pretty good for the temperature we've got today because we're about 90 degrees range. So this should be pretty good for an actual start. Next over, this is going to be our starter button, but we haven't got the power turned on yet in the car. That's the starter button that we're going to use. Right here is our key. We're going to turn it to this position. That gives us on. And it also tells us there's no oil pressure, which there shouldn't be because our engine is not currently running. Down on the floor, those of you who have looked at this vehicle in any of the other videos know it does have a clutch. We step the clutch pedal to the floor even though we've got the vacuum electric clutch because that's not going to work until the engine's running. So we're going to step that to the floor. Over here, we have our actual accelerator. Brake pedal is in the middle. The accelerator is kind of a neat shape in the Terraplane. And I usually will step it down a couple of times 
on an initial attempt at a start. Now, of course, this vehicle's been sitting, so it may actually have to crank a little bit, and I may do it more than once to actually get it to start. So let's see how we do here. Okay, crank it a couple times, and I'm gonna give it full choke for a moment. And there we got it. And I did push it back into the position I suggested in the first place. Now, why would it take that long? Because this probably hasn't been started in several weeks, and our carburetor was probably largely dry, so we had to suck up some gas up into it to get it running. But that's a total cold start on the terraplane. At this point, I turn on my little fan, and I can also take my foot off the clutch because the vacuum electric clutch is running, so I don't have to worry about that, and I can move my electric hand in any position right now, and I've just put it in neutral for the moment. So that gives you an idea of how it starts, and we'll back it out and take it for a little bit of a drive, and you'll see it run. One other thing to know that we back now that we backed it out is all antique vehicles have characters and personalities. Each one you started a little bit different, even if it's the same vehicle. So another 1937 Terraplane theoretically is going to be close in starting, might be a little different. But one of the things, as I said, you have to learn to deal with is your choke. This vehicle has to run on choke for some time before it actually wants to run well. And as we start out, I may play with the choke in order to actually make the vehicle work properly. Again, there's no computer to control this, only me. So we're gonna back out here and take a real short little drive to the north and back for a moment. And you'll see how I operate the vehicle 